we've been instructed to start at vertex A. So we've got to indicate that by putting a 1 there. Uh, also, what we've got to do is delete row A. That's so that we don't try and connect to A again at a later stage. Uh, now, the question now is A is in the tree, but what's the sort of nearest vertex that we can get to from A? And to answer that, we need to look at column A, and we need to look for the smallest number there. We can see it's 25. So we're going to circle that now. And that means we've added our first edge. Um, the edge be sort of began at A and goes out to O. So I'd like to indicate that here. Um, I think it's best to fill the order of the arcs uh, as you go along. Now back to the matrix. We, we've added O and we need to indicate that. It was the second vertex to be added. So we indicate that there. And then we've, we've got to make sure that we delete that row so we don't try and uh, connect to O again. Now we're looking at two columns. We're looking at column A again. We're looking at the numbers there. But we're also looking over at column O. There it is. But we need to pick the lowest from those two columns. So this is really the difficult bit, and with a big matrix like this, this, this could be where errors come in, so we've got to be very careful. But after some examination, we can conclude that there's 17. So that means that vertex B is, um, is now in our tree. Uh, we got to it from O, so let's just indicate here OB. Back to the matrix. Um, we've not yet indicated the free on the B, we must do that. And we need, now need to delete row B, so don't try and connect to it again. Now we're looking at three columns. We're looking for the smallest number from column A, from column B, and from column O. Column O looks pretty heavy now with some really big numbers. So it's likely to be from column A and B. And we can see that 37 is the next smallest. So circling that, we've now got to vertex H from B. So we've added the edge BH. Uh, you can write it as BH or HB, that's fine. But I think writing BH um, is a bit more natural. So it sort of shows how the tree is growing. Now H has now been added, that's the fourth one, so we indicate that there, and then we delete H there. So let's not go to sleep, let's do this accurately, looking at the four columns now, uh, we can see that actually 19 has just been introduced. This is often the case when a new column gets introduced, it, you often find that uh, there's a nice small number there. So now C um, has been added from H. So we, we add the edge HC there. When it, we are going to indicate that C is the fifth vertex to be added there. And let's delete row C. Now, looking at a new column C, we can see we've got a rather low 21. I think that's going to be the winner, but it's always worth just checking and verifying, looking around. Uh, H does have the 34, no doubt that will be used possibly soon. If indeed 21 um, is the winner, we're going to circle that now. So now E has been added to the diagram and it's, it's, it's the edge CE that's been added, so we're going to indicate that there. And E was the sixth vertex to be added, so we're going to indicate that here, and we're going to delete row E. Now we've got quite a few columns to keep an eye on. Uh, I'm going to go through from the beginning. A, probably not going to win with 70s being the lowest. 
B's got 65, so that's winning so far. Um, column E, uh, well that's got 59, so that's currently winning. But H improves that a lot with 34, and O doesn't cannot improve 34. So 34 wins there. So we circle 34. That means that vertex K is now in our spanning tree. Uh, we got there by adding edge H K. Let's indicate that there. Back to the matrix, we're required to indicate the number at the top here. It's a seven to be added. And don't forget to delete row K so we don't try and connect it uh, to it again. So now quite a few columns to look at. Um, I think I'm just going to work through systematically from A. I know A is quite high and that's not going to win. B, 65 possibly. Uh, but no, E has got the 59, so that's not really winning at the moment. H is just left with really high numbers. Ah, but K has got super low number. Again, the, the new one to go into the solution often does provide quite a nice number. So that means that vertex G is now in the solution. Uh, we, uh, we got there by adding the arc K G. So let's indicate that there. Back to the matrix, we've got to number up G. That was the eighth to be added, so halfway there. And let's delete row G. Looking for the low numbers again. I don't think A is going to win. Uh, this is 59 actually in E. Is that going to be beaten? Um, yes, slightly by K because we've got a 58 there. And O, I doubt will be used again. They're really quite high in O. But 58 is the winner. So we've connected to vertex N. We've done that by adding arc K N indicate K N here and N well that's the ninth vertex to be added and let's delete the row here so now we've got a lot of columns to keep an eye on it's perhaps worth just looking at the latest one the ninth one uh, column N just to see what numbers that throws up we can see it's got 17 there and I don't think that's going to be beaten because the last one we added was 58. And if we did our job correctly there and we checked all the columns, then 17 should, should definitely be, be the winner. I think the, the second highest will, uh, will out of the other columns will be the 59. So I'm going to go for the 17. I didn't notice anything lower than that previously. That means that we've connected L by adding edge NL. Let's put that in there. So L is now in the solution. That was the 10th. And let's delete that row. Okay, we've still got that 24 in column N, which is quite impressive. I don't think that's going to be beaten. It's, it's quite low. But I'm just having a little check, just, just verifying that uh, there aren't some numbers there which, which have been missed. So yes, 24 is the lowest, so we're going to circle that now. That means that we've connected to vertex M via, uh, or, or by adding the arc or the edge NM. So we'll put that there. NM has been added. And M was the 11th. So we've got that there, and we cross off that row, so we're not going to connect it there again. Um, look at the 11th, actually. Um, we've got a 23 in there. Actually, no, we've got better than that. We've got a 16. So that's probably the, the, the best solution. In fact, if it's not, we've gone wrong uh, somewhere else, so it really better be. But just have a little check around. Uh, 16 is the lowest, so let's commit to that one. So we have now connected to vertex P via vertex M, so we've added the edge MP. Let's put that in there. Now 
he was the 12th to be added to our spanning tree, which is almost complete now. And we now need to delete the row there. So let's look at the new one, see if we've got a nice number in there. Well, that's a 43. Uh, perhaps that can be beaten elsewhere. Let's look around. O doesn't beat it. N doesn't beat it. Now M does. That's got a 23. And that will take some beating. But I'm, I'm going to check every column here. You should really. Can that be beaten 23? I don't believe it can. So 23 is the next best one. Um, you can see it, uh, it's very possible to make errors here. So when matrices are this size, it really uh, is best to program them onto a computer, of course. Um, now, D is now in the solution. We got there via vertex, uh, vertex M. So we're going to write MD next. And D was the 13th to be added. So we put that in there. And let's cross off row D. Um, let's look at the new one that got introduced, 13. Now, actually, that's not very impressive. Uh, the lowest that one has is 88. That's unlikely to be the winner. Um, I'm going to start from the beginning. A, I don't think it's going to win. Um, B has got the 65, um, which is the winner so far. C really has, well, literally nothing now. D doesn't beat the 65. E has got the 59, so E is winning so far. Uh, H, uh, no, K. It's not going to win. L, no. Um, we're really only looking at three rows here, of course. Uh, let's keep an eye on them. Ah, and we've got 41 uh, there. In fact, it may be better just to scan across the three rows. We can see 135, 134, etc. So 73 on that row. On the I row, we can see we have a 59, but we've got that 41. So 41 will be the lowest. I think when a lot of the rows are crossed off, it's perhaps better to look horizontally than it is vertically. So 41 is the lowest. So we've now got vertex I included in the solution via vertex M. So let's add the edge M I to our ordering. And I was the 14th to be added, so almost there. Let's cross off um, I there. So two more to go. Uh, let's do our thing of scanning across. I think that's probably easier at this stage. Um, 82 on, on, on row F. Uh, on J, though, we have uh, a 56, so that will be the lowest. And that means that we have connected J. Uh, we've done that from M. So let's add the edge M J here. And J was the 15th to be included in the solution. And let's cross off J. Um, so now we've just got to connect to F. And the shortest way is the 73. And we do that from I. So let's add the edge I F. And we have our minimum spanning tree. We don't really need to delete row F because the algorithm is really terminated now. We should, though, put the 16 above the F there. So we have a minimum spanning tree with 16 vertices. Uh, perhaps it's worth just checking if you've got 16 vertices, how many edges should you have? Well, if you've got two vertices, you should have one. Um, in fact, if you've got n vertices, you should have n minus 1 edges. So we should have 15 edges here. Perhaps it's worth just verifying that we have. Um, so just adding up here, uh, we've got 8 on the top row there. Uh, but indeed, we do have seven on the bottom there, so that's actually verified. 
Finally, it asks us to total up the, the weight of the minimum spanning tree. And really, we do that by adding up all the numbers in the matrix that got circled. So I'm just going to go off and get my calculator. I'll be back in a moment. OK, so I've added all those 15 numbers up. And I did also check that there were 15 circles corresponding to the 15 edges that were added. The total weight is 4. Seven, seven. So you'll get nothing as difficult as that in the exam, which is a 16 by 16 matrix. Perhaps the most you'll get is a 6 by 6. So it'll be considerably easier in the exam. But it is really worth practicing and honing your skill on the larger matrices. And if you want to have more practice, uh, there is an Excel file in the folder where you found this video um, that generates random matrices every time so you can have plenty of practice.